A big thanks to Jarrett with Oxidine Law Firm, oxlawfirm.com. What does Jarrett do? Well, Jarrett will take care of any divorce that you might be thinking about having. He handles divorces in the state of Georgia and especially the greater Atlanta area. Oxlawfirm.com. Thanks, Jarrett. Shoot the grill. Aim to chill. Too many cold ones. I need an Advil, yeah. Shoot the grill. All right, welcome to the Shoot to Grill podcast. My name is Jason Bailey right here in beautiful Roswell, Georgia, the Atlanta Grill Company, uh, where we once again have a special celebrity guest and our awesome chef, Rashid, from philipsbarbecueco.com and WWE Hall of Famer, inventor, creator of DDP Yoga, because it ain't your mama's yoga. Don't ever call it yoga to Diamond Dallas Page or no, whip some ass, right? Exactly. I've done, I did that once before, and you made sure you set me straight. It ain't just yoga, correct? Yeah, and I'm at the point right now, and normally I'd be wearing one of my shirts, but I couldn't find one. Uh, but I call it now DDPY. Right. Because I want people why to stop calling it just yoga. <laughs> but it's not. You know? <laughs> and change lives on a different level. We'll get to that. Uh, right. You, when I text you, I said, Dallas. Uh, what did you want to eat? And you suggested grouper. And I said to Sheed, I go, can you do grouper? And again, we're going to use the Kamado Joe. Yes, now, Dallas, uh, you know, with your performance studio in Smyrna, Georgia, uh, where you do DDPY, you've got an entire build out very similar to this right. with the kitchen. Yeah. So you're very health conscious over there. I learned that lesson the hard way at one of Dallas's parties, which I'll get to later. Uh, but, Sheed, can you explain how you're going to cook the grouper for us today? Yeah, definitely. Uh, today I'm actually going to do sort of a smoke and sear ordeal. going to sear real, real quick. It's a white fish. It's thin. We're talking about three-quarters of an inch here. It's not going to take much time at all. But I'm going to hit it with some fresh tomato juice, some lime, some lemon, some fresh uh, rosemary, garlic, olive oil, and just let it steam and get those natural juices, natural flavors in there. Right. I respect the health consciousness, so I want to make sure you get a flavorful dish as well as making sure it's good for you. So let me ask you, you're going you're gonna to squeeze all that on the fish while you're cooking it? Yes, sir. Right there, then I'm going to tent it with some aluminum foil, some real uh, thin foil, not the heavy-duty stuff because I don't want to rush the cooking process. Right. It's already such a thin, white, flaky fish. Right. That will just really steam it, get those flavors trapped in there, and make a nice little uh, au jus for us, a nice little fancy French work for gravy. And we'll have the grill cam uh, that you can watch she doing this on the Kamado Joe. Uh, but again, explain, you know, with the different levels of the KJ, yeah. where you're putting it up. You know, like when we do a steak, sometimes you'll sear it down low where it's yeah. hotter, and then you'll move it up and put it even on the edge. So exactly. where are you putting the grouper and at what temperature and how are you venting it? All right, so we've got the KJ going at 350 right now, and I've got two cook zones set up, and I've only got one baffle plate in there. So my, I always do a left to right. My left is my hot. My sear, my open flame, I can look down and see the coals and the fire going. The right, I've got that baffle deflector plate. It's going to be at least another 50 degrees cooler on that side. I can control and move the fish around. If I was doing steaks, it'd really be left all day, then move it to the right. But with this white fish, flaky, real quick on the left side. And I it's mean, important. Really, really the, the grilling process for the KJ is real important because you can, you can screw this up easy with a, a yeah. thin, white, flaky fish. I'm glad you got me six of them so I can get it right. Yeah. No, please. <laughs> you, got, you, you, got, you, you got a big guy and you got a lot of people inside exactly. to feed, so don't screw up any well, of that five fish. Five more for him. We're splitting one just so oh, you know. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and, of course, Terry, uh, who brings us with uh, all, the, all the meats every week with AtlantaSteakAndSeafood.com, you know, the, the quality of meat that he brings is absolutely amazing. So that's going to be great. And you'll be able to check out the grill cam as Sheed's cooking. So if you want to get to work, Diamond, I don't know if you got any questions. I want to ask you, uh, well, you, you won't use any spices, though. Oh, uh, so we've got a great selection of spices here over at Atlanta Grill Company. They've got their own Marriott of stuff. But, some of mine as well. Uh -oh. yeah, you got yeah. yours. Yeah, I've got mine. I, I don't know about you, sir. I'm a huge uh, mafia crime movie fan. So Love I made it. a line Love. of my rubs are dubbed after some of my favorites. So, uh, Two that I've got here today is uh, the Slab Father. You know, I think we all kind of know which one's going there. Right. And uh, American Prime after American Gangster. Right. And uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of both 
today just as a light dusting, nothing crazy. Right. Best, best thing about those, I make them myself, and each one's only five ingredients or less. Oh, wow. I try that, to keep it simple. So it's real. It's coming from real food. Exactly, exactly. That, if you can pronounce pivotal. everything that's in there. Not yeah. Dimonocloakly, phosphor, right. whatever you do. I tell people all the time, I go, if you can't say it, there's a really good chance you shouldn't eat it. Well, I, you know, just read labels. Labels are very important, man. Exactly. My grandmother used to, when I was younger, I always thought she was silly, but that's what she'd say. If you can't pronounce it, don't put it in your body. Right. Well, now you're older. Makes Grandma's still going around. She's moving faster than I am. <laughs> so. so when you're at the, the performance center and you're cooking stuff up, um, and I've seen a lot of the videos on your website, you know, where, where either you're doing it or you bring a chef in to do it, uh, everything's gluten-free, right? Yeah, everything's gluten-free. Everything's dairy-free. Everything's GMO free, which means it has not been genetically modified. Like people just don't realize, you know, if you really want to educate yourself, watch two movies, Food Inc. You can find it out there somewhere on the Internet um, and Genetic Roulette. Those two movies, literally the reason why I eat the way I eat. And um, once I became gluten free and dairy free, I felt 15 years younger. So the food of you know that's not real food and you'll see that in those movies like they've genetically changed wheat dairy corn soy now, i don't care what people eat right they can eat whatever they want people who do my program can eat whatever they want because you know my program is still going to help them but if you combine it with the food well then you have results like disabled veteran arthur borman right you know and go to ddpyoga.com go to the bottom of the page just watch that video Guys, 5'6", 297, could not walk without the aid of knee braces, back braces, and canes for over 15 years. 47 years old at the time when he started. At the end of the video, which is 10 months later, he loses 140 pounds. Forget the weight loss, though. He loses the knee braces, the back braces, and the canes, not just to walk, but run. That's a whole different type of life right there. But when it comes to... Uh, the workout, it's going to really help you. But it's not going to heal you like that. That comes from the food. Yep. And what most, I finally am finding some doctors who get it. Like most doctors say, here, let me write this prescription for you. Right. This is what's going to cure you, this prescription. A lot of times, food, real food, will heal you. Yeah. And most people don't get that. But then again, they've not... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the not, more than anything, they don't have the knowledge. Yeah. And a lot of people want to keep their head in the sand. Well, you know, it's like, keep it there. I don't care. Eat whatever you want. Arthur was uh, really, I mean, you'd probably say too, Dallas, that he was the guy that put DDP yoga into on the, the on the map. So uh, yeah. when well, Dallas. Chris Jericho put it on the map. And if there's wrestling fans out there who are watching, Chris Jericho just headlined. Um, a- AEW is a new wrestling organization. It's going to be on TNT starting this October. It's like the next WCW, right. but different, completely different. Uh, Chris Jericho blew his back out seven years ago. Three different spine specialists. That's, that's where my workout comes from. When I blew my back out and three spine specialists tell me my career's over. Jericho did the same thing seven years ago. It happened to me in 99, so 20 years ago. Seven years ago, Chris had known about my program the entire time. Never did it. Until he saw Arthur's video and until those three doctors said, you're never playing again. Your back's screwed. Right. You're done. And five weeks later, he was 85% pain-free. Three months later, he headlined WrestleMania. That was seven years ago. At 48 years young, he just headlined with Kenny Omega at a sold-out show in the MGM Grand called Double or Nothing, and it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. I, mean, I hope he wrestles into his mid-50s because he's my physical athlete poster boy. If I played in the NFL, the NBA, any, any professional sport, and I was a fan of Chris Jericho, I'd want to know what he's doing. Right. Well, he also does it in his hotel rooms. Like, he'll post videos, yeah. um, whether it's on his social media uh, or he'll share it with you guys, and you'll see him in a hotel room. You know, and that's what's great, you know, about, about the DDP uh, yoga is that, you know, like, I'm doing it at my house. You know, and I sit there, and, and going back to Arthur, you know, a lot of times some of the um, 
whatever you know workout you choose, Arthur's up there. Yeah, you know he's up there and no, he's he's a, he's the guy. He's an instructor put it worldwide on the map. And he was on Shark Tank with you. Yeah, he was on Shark yeah. Tank with me, uh, and he he literally uh, his video probably got about a you know between how many people have shared it. And brought it to conferences. Like someone said, they were at this big uh, conference for uh, for GM. This is like six months ago, and they played that video wow. for five thousand people. General Motors, you know, um, people, uh, programs like uh, or online things like Bible Force or um, Gold Gold Coast or whatever these inspirational channels. They've all played it. So it's got to have like a half a billion views but nowhere in it will you see ddp yoga because i knew if i would have put advertising in it people wouldn't have shared it would have cheapened it yeah it would just would have, it would have, they would just wouldn't think they wouldn't have dug it as much but when they got inspired by it then they're going to share it go yeah. back to the gluten-free thing sheed yeah um and i will send you over there and start cooking up the fish but uh so a couple years back i always tell the stories right? it's funny <laughs> so <laughs> we you know Dallas has got this Christmas, big Christmas blowout every year. It's yeah, his you're, favorite you're, holiday. You're, you're invited next year, bro. Yeah. Uh, favorite holiday. Yeah. You go in there, especially if you're a wrestling fan, you don't know who the hell's going to show up. One year, my wife, uh, Rach, is in there wrestling with, wrestling, literally wrestling <laughs> with Jake the Snake Roberts I over pajama it. pants. Uh, I, I was I waiting it. for him to DDT it, right? <laughs> so we brought, you know, we brought some food there. You know, I say bring some food, bring a dessert, we bring a cake. And we put the cake there. There's all this food, delicious food. The drinks, bartenders, is a big shindig. And uh, we're walking around enjoying ourselves. And this lady, she starts screaming in the middle of the party. Who brought this cake? Who brought this cake? Oh, and I'm like, oh, my God, do I admit it? What did, I, what did we do? Did you put bees in there or knives, spice? <laughs> and I was like, we did it. And uh, she's like, it's not gluten-free. And she puts this big oh. sign over the cake. Not gluten. I mean, like, we were scarlet letter. 90% of the people who come to the party aren't. But we serve nothing because people can't tell. Yeah, of course. You know, they can't tell. Put that you on know. the invite. <laughs> it wasn't on the invite. <laughs> am, I, am I good to bring brisket? Like, this, yeah. it's just. Well, it's gluten free, brother. You can right, bring there we go. I don't even know what gluten free means. <laughs> and people do bring. They bring, everybody brings something. And it's a pretty big spread. Uh, this uh, year, we probably had about 100 people at my house, and it was pouring out. Wow. And everybody takes Ubers yeah. because they're drinking. But also, my neighborhood is is tough to you know park. So if you you might have to park half three quarters of a mile away. I'll take you I'll park. take an Uber. Yeah, but that brisket will get eaten because by the time the night's over, that food's gone. Oh, it's all gone. Yeah, it's I can't gone. Look forward to it. Yeah, I really can't wait good. To tell the Uber, take me to uh, DDP's house. <laughs> yeah, just just put just type in you know, your Google Map or your Uber at DDP's house. Uh, all right, grouper. With everything else that you mentioned, exactly. again, the grill cam will be going so you can follow along. And all of Sheed's recipes are on the website, yep. shoottogrillpodcast.com, where maybe you're watching this now. If you're not listening to it on iTunes, whatnot, or getting the uh, feed into your phone. So, Sheed, go to work, my friend. Can we'll do. check Can in do. with you when you're all said and done. Just give me a holler. I uh, want to talk to Dallas a little bit. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of covered a lot of the, 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 uh, the DDP yoga stuff, but I want to go with the books. You know, the... You, you just had your follow-up book, right? It would be considered your follow-up book, yeah, correct? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it, it was really because I have to, people have to be moved to action. And then once they're moved to action, how do they keep it going? So Positively Unstoppable, The Art of Owning It. Right. Um, and people are like, what's it? It's whatever you want it to be. You know, uh, it really is a blueprint for your success. And it has nothing to do. We put the, there's one chapter about DDP yoga, but that's not the focus. The focus is on this muscle, your brain, which can do anything. You know, especially if you believe it. Right. Uh, the power of belief is insane, and I talk about that through my book. You don't have to name names, but I'm curious. You get a lot of professional athletes. You know, the wrestlers, the football players, the baseball players, basketball players, especially here in the Atlanta area, come to the uh to the to your performance center in smyrna um is there anybody that's come in there that you said hey look your mind's not in this i i I just can't work with you 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 gotta go or you gotta come back with a different attitude you know um most of the guys who 
seek me out. Um, ben Garland played offensive guard for uh, for seven years for the Falcons. He just went to San Francisco. Um, he's now playing over there. Uh, they're it's kind of like him. They like they have a really different level of work ethic because to do my program with all the other things that you know high end athletes are doing, you know what they're actually. Um, what they're having to, you know, whether it's, you know, cardio, lifting weights. I mean, they got a pretty, you know, s- schedule's pretty full right. of, you know, especially when it comes to getting ready, whether they're, you know, uh, your receivers or, you know, quarterbacks, whatever. They, they, they're they always doing something to better their crap. Well, this adds one more thing. Well, this is the glue. The DDPY is the glue that holds you together. So, You've got to really be ready to put another level of work in it. Yeah. And when I'm saying I'm talking about half hour a day, 45 minutes a day, guy like Ben Garland, he's 30 years old now. He wants to play for a few more years. Yeah. You know, this that's guy, a few million dollars in his pocket right. if he can pay play for a few more years. You know, it, it, that's the whole deal. And from a personal standpoint, not that I'm anywhere near the athletic side of these guys. Uh, you know, the Jerichos and the Big, but you know, most of us, maybe you. Uh, you know, played sports when you were younger, you know, played a little bit when I was younger. As you get older, no matter what, whether you played sports or not or continue to play sports, your body ages. And one of the big things is stretching and getting those, you know, that's a lot. That, that's what I've gotten out of, out of DDP yoga is the stretching. I'll sit there in my man room at the house and I'll, you know, put on my Apple TV and I'll go on my iPad and I'll do it. I just want a good stretch. And it's done wonders for me for the stuff that I do now, whether it's gym or tennis or whatnot. But that stretch is just amazing. I mean, really. And and if you're engaging the way I teach it, then you're not just stretching. You're stretching and strengthening. And here's the muscles, the ligaments, and the tendons. Yeah. And if you're doing it, well, then again, your body is going to feel better. Your body's going to feel younger. It's going to back pain will be non-existent. Unless you've got like vertebrae that are blown out, yeah, yeah, you know, all for of that. Everybody I've worked with that has back pain, it's gone. Yeah, and even people I don't work with, people who put up stuff on Twitter or, or Facebook or whatever. So, you know, I know what you know, what the program does. It's just getting people to get over that yoga hump, and that's why I don't call my stuff yoga. Right? Do you but, do you remember the the night that your career was? over where you remember injuring yourself where you knew that when I blew my back out or yeah. when I, before yeah. I do it <laughs> that's the whole thing when you're I'm just watching uh, uh, Say My Name which is Muhammad Ali's new movie that just came out on face on uh, on um, H- HBO documentaries right. and he pretty much you know, they've got so much film of Ali that he um you know, he pretty much narrates his story. It's really well done. But he talks about when he when Ken Norton broke his jaw. Mm. In the first round, they went 15. You know, and first round, he broke. I think he went 12 on that one. He broke his jaw. You know right away they broke his jaw. When I tore my, and he kept going. Because if he would have tore his rotator cuff, he'd have been done. Right. And that's what happened to me. I tore my rotator cuff one time. I knew it. I hurt. I, I feel like someone shot me in the road in, in my shoulder because yeah. I couldn't lift my arm. There was nothing. It didn't function. Like paper ripping, probably right. Just more well, like a knife going. Psh. Yeah. And then I mean, I literally couldn't lift my arm up. And I, I, when I hit the mat, I was like, "Oh my god!" Who were you in the ring with? You remember? I was actually tag teaming two guys you don't know. But um, my my partner was Kevin Nash. Okay. And that's back in the beginning when we first started. And I, I, I just rolled over. I said, Kev, don't tag me back, bro. I think I broke my shoulder. Yeah. You know? And then the next time when I knew I really hurt myself was when I ruptured my L4 and L5. Again, Kevin Nash is involved, but it's on the other side. I'm actually... So he did it to you. Now, purpose. First, but- the first time... We were wrestling together. We were a tag team partner. Yeah. The second time, it was me and Canyon against him and Scott Hall. Uh, and he picked me up the power bomb me. And it wasn't the power bomb. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, and when I hit that mat, it was like an explosion went off in my back. Because, you know, vertebrae, you know, that runs our whole spine is amazing. But what's really amazing are the shock absorbers in between 
the vertebrae that they call discs. Well, think of a jelly donut and bam. Right. You step on a jelly donut, there's no jelly donut left. Yeah. Well, that's what happened to my two my two discs. So when you land it, who's supposed to win? Uh, you know, I don't even remember. I remember tagging Canyon in and said, don't tag me back. I'm sure they won. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, w- I, I probably was supposed to come back. Yeah. But I'm not coming back. But you told Nash, like, dude, you, no, I'm done. No, I rolled. I rolled to the apron. Nash had seen me like that before, mm. you know, because, again, my career, I didn't start wrestling until I was 35. My career took off when I was 40. Right. When I blew my back out, I was 42. It was going into January of 2000, and of 1999. And, I mean, I'm, I was off TV for a long time. And I had three different spine specialists tell me my career's over. And then the guy who wouldn't be gone dead doing yoga, which is me, right. would do anything, you know, to get back in the ring. Because I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. It wasn't guaranteed. If I don't work... They'll give you time off the heel. By that time, were you already over when you I got injured and over, signed the deal? Yeah, insanely at that point. What what, what was the one storyline one night that got you over that you knew? Because, I mean, the WCW days, I mean, it was the NWO versus the world. Right. You know, you literally had two good guys. It was you and it was Sting. And, and, every, Goldberg, and Goldberg was on the Oh, rise. and Goldberg, right, yeah. So you had three good guys. Everybody else, they were bad. You know, and, or and, or they or they just beat them down, right? And what was fortunate for me is Sting. So it was fortunate for me because Sting was so smart that you know he'd worked for 10, 12 straight years, you know, and he saw Kevin and Scott come in, and then Hulk went with them. They were killing everyone, hmm. and they just kept getting bigger and bigger. They they were killing everyone. Part of the storyline, Sting said, mm, "I need to take some time down." And he went up and into the rafters. Yeah. Like, he was contemplating quitting back then because he just figured he saw at the end of his career. It was Scott Hall who's talked to him about doing the crow gimmick. Well, Scott Hall came over there. Scott was Scott Hall's idea. Scott, very smart guy in the, in, in the world of professional wrestling. Helped me a lot. Um, I can't tell you how many times I said to him, dude, no, it's got to be done like this. And later on, I would call him back and go, hey, dude, I got it. You're right. And because he'd already know, and he tried a bunch of stuff. He'd failed it a bunch of times. Well, you guys so, all came up in that AWA era, too. Yeah, he know? was way ahead of me on that because I was coming out so late. Like, when I told him I was going to be a wrestler at 35, that only happened because they wouldn't let me manage guys anymore. Uh-huh. And Scott was like, what are you doing, dude? You're 35 and a half. You're too old. Like, everyone said it. So you know what I did? I stopped telling people my age. Because I didn't look 35 at the time. Yeah. I looked like I was in my mid-20s. So people really didn't know. Well, those are some good matches. I mean, you. this is when Sting and the Ultimate Warrior, the Dingo Warrior, you know, they were a tag team. Scott Hall was Scott Hall with the stash. Right, right, right. right. You know, I mean, there's Colonel DeBeer. Dude, I remember a match with Colonel DeBeers and Jimmy Snuka. Oh, God. And Colonel DeBeers pushes Jimmy Snuka off the top rope on the concrete. Wow. Blood everywhere. I'm sitting there glued to my television. Oh, my God. I remember the day that this big guy with bald head all tattooed in a white T-shirt, just a fan of wrestling, gets pulled from the audience to come in. Bam, bam, big low. Right, right. I remember. I was addicted to the AWA I knew stuff. I bam, bam since he was 16. Did you really? Yes. We're both Jersey guys, yeah, right? But same area. Yeah. Oh, really? By, by, t- by the time, Bam Bam was like, in our area, was he was a legend. You know, I mean, he was a high school kid who was 320 pounds who could do cartwheels. I was just going to say that. You know? He could do cartwheels. Yeah, but but not just cartwheels. He'd take your head off. Right. There were kids who went up to, would go up to, like, you're supposed to wrestle him, who forfeited. Like, wouldn't even go in, a ramp, go, go in there. Because he was scary, man. As very young, he was scary. And he, he was a professional wrestler way before he was a professional wrestler. Hey! Give us 30 seconds so we can thank some good people for making this happen. You a cigar smoker? Great news for you. Thehumidor.com. You got to go to this website. They are a big supporter of the Shoot to Grill podcast. Free shipping on every order, every day. Cigar bundles, samplers, and boxes. Guaranteed freshness. Huge selection of cigars. Hand-picked 
by certified tobacconists. That's an awesome word. Great prices, the best in the business, thehumidor.com, and a big thanks for sponsoring the Shoot to Grill podcast. See, that wasn't bad. Now back to the Shoot to Grill podcast. Who got him into the business? You know, um, it's funny because me and him used to talk about um, going into business. Back when he was like 18, I was running this big club in Fort uh, in, in Asbury Park, New Jersey, one block away from the Stone Pony. And Bam would come in some, because he was running with the bikers back then. And, and a, like a badass, called the Pagans, badass gang. So I'd see those guys, and we were pretty dressed up, pretty thousand people. People weren't dressed, like dressed up, but dressed nice. Right. And then comes these biker dudes, and you know. What are you gonna do? Yeah, well, you know, yeah, I was really tight with Bam Bam by that time, and I'd come walking up behind him and be like, hey Bam, we're no trouble in here tonight. Oh, come on, Paige, I didn't cause no trouble in here. <laughs> Not in your place. You know, but Bam, like, Bam did uh, stuff like, uh, he was, uh, I'll tell you how strong he was. He was an arm wrestler, and he was doing those arm wrestling tournaments. Smoke everybody, and they had, like, East Coast Finals, and he beat a guy who was 6'8", 468 pounds. Really? And Bam was probably about 350 then. And then I lost touch with him. And then I was flicking channels like this, you know, like, actually turning them. Had to get to the TV. Yeah, and... uh I saw him on WCCW. Yeah. I had no idea what that was. You know, I grew up with WWF. Yeah. You know, as a kid, actually, WWF. But I saw Bam, I was like, oh, my God. He made it. And then, what you just said, he, he got up, up in New York, WWE, and they pull him out of the crowd, and he's hanging with Hogan, the biggest star in the world. Right, yeah. And, like, I had no way to get a hold of him or any of that. But when he saw that I started managing guys and then flipped over to wrestling, he got a hold of me. And I hadn't talked to him in probably 10 years at that point. And he was like, man, I can't believe you're finally doing it. You're sure your body's going to be able to take that old man? He was busting my job because he was seven years younger than me. But did it, like, was there you know, anybody that grabbed him from a bar or said, hey, you know, like, you need to do this, and then he just kind of... I, I think he... I knew he always wanted to do it, and I'm sure he got, he got drawn down. He was through Texas. Some probably said... Because back then, there were still federations, like territories. Sure, yeah. Like Georgia had one. North Carolina had one. Florida had one. Kansas City and everybody had, had a guy. And, and, well, they had, a, they had a whole league. You know, think of... There was 40 wrestling leagues. Yeah. That's what it was like. And nobody stole each other's top guys. Until Vince Vince McMahon Sr. died, and then Vince was like, I'm taking this out of the gymnasiums right. and smoke-filled parlors, and I'm going to make it huge. And if you really get into the story of Vince McMahon, like most guys who are billionaires are risk-takers. If they don't inherit the money, and even if they do, like a Trump is a risk-taker, you know, and he inherited you know, a million bucks. What was a million bucks? Right. Wasn't like he had freaking a billion bucks. And I'm not a Trump fan. <laughs> I'm not, a, you know, to me, uh, I hate politics in general because I think it's all BS. I know? agree. You know, I can't believe in any of it. But um, so it's all a work. Yeah, it's all, <laughs> it's all a work. Jesse Ventura said, you know, it, 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 I think it was before it became polarizing with Trump because Democrats who are such bullies about the Trump thing, right. when I find myself sticking up for Trump, it really pisses me off. Because I'm not a Trump fan. Yeah. You know, but you can't be that much of a bully. If you're a bully about anything, when it comes to me, I'm going to have something to say. Yeah. You know, because I, I just hate there's people. There's a right, there's a left, but no one wants to meet in the middle. Right. Logical. They're never going <laughs> to. No, They're no, no. never going to. I agree with you on that. But back to the same story. I, I believe it. I, I, I remember what you asked me at the beginning on that rant me and you got into. Um, like, what was the moment? The moment was, for me, that my career started to take off. I was getting my, my diamond cutter finish over. And the only reason that finish got over was because it came out of nowhere. And you didn't see it coming. And, like, Randy Orton, you know, there's things all over out of nowhere. Right. Well, I was doing the out of nowhere when he was in grammar school. And... Uh, uh, and Randy's a great athlete. Um, and he came up with some... I'm going to let that truck go by. That's a lot. This is not going to work. <laughs> we got to stop these guys. All right. 
Come on through. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, but the finish just came out of nowhere, and I didn't go out there and just. A lot of guys will just beat up an opponent. I want to make them look good. So when I beat them, I beat somebody. Yeah. And if you look at they're on YouTube, there's a video called "Diamond Cutters Out of Nowhere." You know, who did it, Dylan. When he was 15 years old, he's one of my editors for. Uh, oh, Sunny Days. Sunny Days. Sunny Days. Who was in a battle royal at the yes. AEW? Uh, I mean, what's about Dream Come True? I was 27 yeah. or 28, but when he was 15. See what a lot of a lot of you might not realize is that you know Dallas has taken a lot of these a lot of guys just under his wing that wanted to be a part of the DDP Yoga, and obviously fans growing up watching Dallas on television, you know, so there's that gray area of wanting to be a part of something to better themselves in life but also being able to be around Dallas all the time uh Dylan one of these guys uh who I guess now you've known you for like 12 13 years is now a professional wrestler and had his big couple months ago at AEW the big pay-per-view sunny days goes in and I mean I'm just reading his Facebook stuff and it's watching it's like you know it's like America's Got Talent when they get the golden buzzer for the kid you know yeah, like it was really crazy because he never he has his own wrestling organization called Southern Honor yeah. right here in uh, Canton, Georgia. And his shows are great. And at his last big show, he had, because he's around Cody, he's around, you know, he, around the guys. So they showed up, Kenny Omega showed up on his show, Jericho showed up on his show, and the Young Bucks, yeah. and Cody. So it was like AEW. But they didn't have any stuff filmed because what they used it all in with all that stuff, they couldn't use the film footage because of New Japan and ROH. They now they saw these guys as competition, so they're not going to they're not going to help them anymore. Mm -hmm. So they create stuff from scratch. So all of a sudden, Dylan, you know, he's working his ass off, you know, for Cody and helping him, you know, edit videos and stuff. And Cody thought, man. Kids, you know, he's got a great attitude. He works his ass off. I'm going to reward him and put him in that battle royal. Now, to understand what that means, this is a Hall of Fame ring, WWE Hall of Fame ring. And even though I help out Cody because he's like my nephew at AEW and I'll do whatever he needs, I'm still a, a WWE guy. Right. Until they tell me you're spending too much time with AEW and we don't want you, <laughs> yeah. then I'm still a WWE guy, you know, because I, I, I'm very respectful to what, I didn't go in there with the push I should have got because they're going to beat down all the WCW guys. Yeah. But last eight years of my life, they've been very good to me. Yeah. And they've let me wear my DDP Yoga shirts as part of my gimmick. I've, you know, when I've been on uh, TV, you know, um, they, they only shine me when I come on. Mm. You know, let me introduce, uh, bring on Jake, uh, induct him in the Hall of Fame, and then they put me in the Hall of Fame. They did a video, Positively Living on Me, like a documentary. They've been really good to me. Stuff's on the network. Yeah, man, and yeah. I, I, I help. I go down to the DDP, uh, down DP, down to the WWE Performance Center. In Orlando. Which is the original name. That's where yeah. I stole that from. And work with the guys all the time. Tommaso Ciampa, you know who he is, right? Yeah, the NXT he, champion. Right. Yeah. Uh, he had to give up the belt because he broke his neck. Mm. And he just he, he's 10 weeks out of surgery. He just spent three days at my house. Yeah. And what he's doing there, he does the program. You know, he's, he was doing it really, really religiously. You break a neck, it's only so much you can do. But he's got knee surgery, shoulder surgery. I think he's got three knee surgeries. You know, a couple shoulder surgeries. So... He's 33, and he's an amazing athlete, but he wants to hold back the hands of time as long as he can. So once he you know, got to where he could do my program, he's like, D, I'm going to come up and spend a couple of days with you. You know, so you know, before that, Big Cass was there yeah. for like three days. And uh, again, just trying to work with these guys and help them hold back the hands of time, stay healthy, get them eating as good as, as they will. And then train in that way, you know? Yeah. So, but I don't want to keep, we keep <laughs> drifting away. The thing that really made my career take off was I came up with this idea of having Scott and Kevin. Now, Kevin was my tag team partner. Scott Hall, I actually managed and created that whole look. I mean, from the Scott Hall with the walrus mustache to Scott Hall with the black, be you know, black hair and, 
know, the brush cut beard, the five o'clock shadow, which he has around two o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, handsome devil, man. Make him, you know, make him more of uh, that smooth character, which I called the diamond stud, and later would get over his razor remote. Yeah. But that was all done before it ever got to Vince in WWE. Like, that character was already in place. Vince just had to take it and push it through the moon, which he did, and made Scott a household name. Yeah. So um, those two guys are serious friends of mine, and they're killing everyone. Sting's gone off into the rafters. Goldberg doesn't really exist yet. Yeah. You know, he's just starting to, to see who he is. Yeah, but you don't really know. It's in the 90, 97. He wasn't out there yet. And so there's really nobody there for WCW to cheer on. And I'm a heel. I'm a bad guy. And I came up with this idea where those two guys come to me and tell me they want me to be in the NWO. And instead of like everybody else, all right, I'm in, let's go. You know, I'm like, oh, now you come to me? Like number eight? Yeah. What happened to number three or four? Right. You know, I can understand not being Hulk, Hulk number three, but how about number four? You like you now you, you snub me, and now you want me? Cause you see, my diamond cutter is the hottest finish in the, in the business. Yeah. I go, I'm not doing it. I don't need you. Uh. Now they normally would have killed guys if someone said no. They just beat them down. But again, we're real life bros, you know, and it just fit the story and they sort of let me walk away and ah, dally he'll get over it then they ask again then they ask again and then finally i put the shirt on in it was a it's really crazy the way it worked out because they it happened in new orleans it was our first superdome show there was thirty three thousand people there mm-hmm. 33 w, wcw had never seen a crowd like that and there we are in the middle of the dome and uh, they both come out after my match, after I beat some guy with, with a cutter, and uh, they give me the shirt. Like, showtime, dude. So I put the shirt on, and it was like people sucked the wind out, <laughs> out of people. You're like, not him. It was their last right. hope, yeah. Right. And then I gave Kevin a big hug, and Scott gave me a high five, and when he went to pull away, I pulled him into the diamond cutter, and he went down. And the roof blew off. And that was the night that you and your character over for it. Were you doing the uh, coming to the ring to the crowd before that? I hadn't done it yet. Okay, so when did you start doing that? Right. Well, what happened is after I hit uh, Scott Hall with the diamond cutter, Nash came looking and ran at me. And I ducked and he went over the top rope. And he went through it. He was going to go through a table, but he caught it on the edge and he took that table and it just swung. How it didn't hit the kid in the first row, I don't know. <laughs> right. Like God, yeah. you know, kept that from happening. Um, and I took off into the crowd. Now, the funny part is I'd never done that before. And when you're going up arena steps, it might be like a hundred steps and then they have a level and then you go up again, you have a level. This is the Superdome. There's at least 350 steps. (laughs) (laughs) So it just keeps going and going and the place is going crazy. I can't stop because if I stop, we're going to get mobbed. Right. So I just keep going up top. Like, how the hell am I going to get down from here? So I no, I'm just running, making where people are like DDP. So after that, did you was it was it your idea to continue to do the crowd yes. thing? Yeah. yeah so you knew that, that was that worked. So with, with the a, the AEW going back to that because um, you know as a wrestling fan and I and I read the dirt sheets and all that stuff and stay involved as much as possible. Uh, do you well first off, do you think it's going to be successful? Do you think it'll have the success that WCW had? Against the WWE. God, man, I, you know, I really don't know. But from what I've seen, man, you know, they got TV coming out on TNT, yeah. you know, which is crazy. Um, they've, got, they've got TNT. They've got a good time slot. If I was them, and I've talked about it, like, I would go right up. If you're going to go for it, like, don't. I think they're scheduled for a Tuesday to do uh, the live shows. And they're going to do live shows everywhere. Mm. Um, 
I would do it Monday. TN, TNA I, tried that. Didn't work. That's TNA. Yeah. Yo, this is a whole But they had, they had household names. But it didn't matter about the names. They didn't have anywhere near the buzz. Dude, did you, have you seen the show yet? Oh, yeah. Well, no, I agree with that. The, the, it, the, it's a different wrestling fan, too. You, it's know? A, it's, you know what it is? It's, it's, the, it's the misfit wrestling fan that feels like, and really, nerds rule the world now. Sure. You know, and, you know, it's Bill, Bill Gates you know, is a perfect example. Yeah. Um, well, it's a point, it's a, it's a generation that doesn't want to be told what to do. They don't. And the WWE, um, it was funny, I was talking about something very similar on my radio show not that long ago. The WWE, in the eyes of these wrestling fans, uh, is the bully. And they've been force-feeding. Yes. Yeah, that's how they see it. Content. That's how they, that's see, how they it. see it, right? That's not, how the fans not, see it. It's not like that, but that's how they see Perception it. Perception is reality. Perception's reality. Right. And so now when you get an alternative and you present it as such, right. and you're not trying to be cooler than the room, like the WWE perceives itself, or is as perceived, I should say, then these types of fans gravitate towards that. You know, as long as they get to know some of these guys and they have to tell the story on a weekly basis, and, and that's the big thing, I think, personally. But do you, do you think that they're going to need more big names? I mean, I Jericho's so. the biggest name. I mean, like, I, no, CM no, Punk's. No, 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 wait a minute. That's not true because, you know, Jericho is the biggest name, yes. But uh, Dean Ambrose, who now is John, John Moxley, Mox, yeah. you know, and he got an unbelievable reaction. Dustin Rhodes got an unbelievable reaction. When I didn't do nothing, I get unbelievable. But I'm a different animal, you know, and I'm not. I'm not working anymore. Um, that's not what I want to do. Um, but uh, these young kids, like, if I'll give you an example, if WWE would have brought a guy out like Dylan, mm -hmm. they'd have shit on him, right? Because they wouldn't have given him an opportunity. Yeah. They're like, show me. And I don't mean the WWE, the company. I mean the fans. Well, a lot of the guys that are in AWE had a chance in WWE. Young Bucks were there for a minute. Kenny but, Omega was there for a minute. But, but, they, but they didn't really get the opportunity. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And, again, it's how you're perceived. And over here at AEW, it's just different. And I think that's the biggest thing. WWE isn't going anywhere. There's not going to be like, they're, they're a bazillion dollar company, you know, and they're, they are their own animal. And some people, like, I say there was WCW fans or WWE fans, and then there's these fans in the middle that bounce back and forth. Right. You know, and that was the determining factor. Hey, give us 30 seconds so we can thank some good people for making this happen. Big thanks to Northside Tool Rental for sponsoring Shoot to Grill, any and all of your tool rental needs with five Atlanta area locations. From chainsaws to track loaders to wood splitters, I've rented just about everything from Northside Tool Rental. Check them out online, northsidetoolrental.com. Thanks, guys. See, that wasn't bad. Now back to the Shoot to Grill podcast. Each of them, I'm sure, because I know Eric Bischoff thought, if we win the war, no, when we win the war, we'll have all their fans too. That wouldn't have been true. The way wrestling was in my era, in the Monday Night Wars, it would be like the Boston Red Sox fan and the Yankee fan. A lot of times they hate each other, like hate each other, the teams. They, if the Boston Red Sox or the Yankees went down and were non-existent, if it was the Red Sox, the Yankees would never watch the Red Sox. And if it was the Yankees, the, they wouldn't watch. Right. That's how much they hate them. Yeah. And that's kind of a little bit that was with WCW and WWF. Like, there's friends of mine who I know, and I mean millions of people who are WCW fans, just stop watching wrestling. Now, this wrestling here is very different because it's, it's more like a video game. How so? Playing video game, bump, thing gets high, bump. Oh, you're talking right. about the actual physical action, yeah. They, they, they're, they're, I'm, I was a great athlete, but nothing like these kids today. Yeah. Like, they can do things and put their body through stuff that they're going to, it's going to, they're going to, it's going to catch up to them, but it's incredible what their bodies can go through. Right. They're like, it's like the X Games. It all started with the X Games. It's like the X Games of wrestling, and it's like a video game 
what I love the most, and the reason why I thought Cody's and Dustin's match stole the show, even though there was Kenny Omega and Jericho was unbelievable, and the Young Bucks, you know, and uh, the Lucha Brothers, they, they were unbelievable matches. But even the undercard, unbelievable matches. The reason why Cody's and Dustin's match, to, for me, stole the show was because the storytelling. Right. And they sold. And when you can get some of these top guys that are over there, and it's going to take a little bit of time because everything's so fast. When they start selling more and making it more believable that they're hurt, because trust me, they're hurting. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sell it. Th- think about this, though. With that pay-per-view, you know, unlike like, – take WWE, for example, when they have – you know, a three-week build-up to their monthly pay-per-view, a right. storyline, three weeks, uh, blah, blah, blah. AEW, because they they know their fan is an internet-based fan, it, there was literally, I think, like a five- to ten-minute video of Cody cutting a promo on his brother who just left the WWE no more than a week and a half out of the pay-per-view that was really, in my opinion, one of the best wrestling promos I've ever seen. It was I, very when cool. I, when I saw it, dude, I literally said, "That was it, though." For the, I mean, for the storyline, that yeah, was it. It was. There it. was no TV time. There was there no, was no it was du- internet. It was one <laughs> promo right. that Cody did. Dustin, it wasn't even on there. Right. What? What? what when I saw, because he, he asked me, he goes, "What do you think?" And I said. When I put my hand on the screen, and remember his dad did that thing about yeah. you know putting his hand. When my hand is your hand, touch my. It was that kind of promo, that legendary promo that Dusty did. Like I don't know if because of like, and this is the great thing about it. Like, like Dustin said, this match should have happened years ago in the WWE, but it never would have got the attention. It never would have got what it got. And when you think about it, it wasn't even the attention because it was, like you said, all it was is one promo. Mm-hmm. But the fans were wanting to see it. And Dustin coming out, again, guy who does DDPY, that's why. I don't know why he can do it at 50 because he's been doing my program for 10 years. You know, actually, eight, eight, seven years because Jericho turned him on. So seven years too. But he looked amazing out there. And Still be able to keep the half face like that was brilliant. Yeah, and he he's become his promo was great. You know his promo like that that he did talking about like Dustin is so comfortable in his own skin right now. And when he was younger, he he would he could hide in the character of Gold Dust, but now Dustin Rhodes, he's the man. I mean, I actually I I, I mean I like the Gold Dust character, but I actually before he got that character i was a fan of just i mean i know he's trying to follow in his dad's footsteps right. and all that stuff i was like that's cool you know i i dug it you know and then the the gold dust thing but you know that was also a different era of wrestling yeah, a whole different era but he got that over man he got that oh, character huge. over like crazy but today today he's dusting and it's like man I, i've seen some of the footage and stuff that uh that they filmed uh after the fact after the pay-per-view and the stuff that's going to come out I mean, it's really powerful. Yeah. And what here's what here's what AEW is doing that no wrestling company has ever done. They're working and they're shooting. And what I mean by that, they're being part of the story mm-hmm. and living through that. But they're also talking about real emotions. Like, how do you really feel about this? And you not only get to know the character but you get to know the person and you realize that like I, I just watched um, and it, you know I, I wasn't crazy about how they do, uh, did the wrestling part of it like the wrestling performance center part because I know it's really nothing like that but the storytelling the Rock's new movie Fighting With My Family yeah. which is about Paige right. um, is really pretty good yeah I haven't seen and it got, yet. got great reviews uh, the wrestling part I thought it was kind of a little bit like that's not how that works <laughs> but I guess kinda um, and you had to dumb it down for you know for people who were watching who weren't wrestling fans but uh, it, it was really good on it and the rock said something in it when he's you know being himself 
because uh, he's in the movie like twice. He, he executive produced it, bought the rights to the story. Um, but he said, I'm just Dwayne Johnson amped up. You know, Diamond Dallas Page got over because it was really me amped up. Mm. Stone Cold Steve Austin, amped up. Ric Flair, Dusty Rose. Like, you can name them all. Anybody you said, man, you know Kevin Nash, Scott Hall. I mean, you, you know these guys because they were really just those guys amped up. Up. Right. And they're doing that over here at AEW, but they're also adding something in there that's personal. Well, I think know? I think a lot of it has to do with um the we live in a, a very entrepreneurial world right now. If you know how to work the system, you can make money. Creativity equals currency. I always say that to people, especially in the entertainment business. Uh, those guys get it more than ever. And I think you have to have like minds leading like minds. And the guys in the AWE, you know, Cody. AEW. I, I mean, AEW, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, they know that. So you have guys like the Young Bucks have a YouTube channel. Cody's not going to go to him and say, hey, you got to shut this down like I think the WWE did to a guy like Zack Ryder and said, hey, look, you know, if we're not making money off of it, you can't promote yourself outside the business. It's a huge problem I have with companies. Trust me, I have the similar problem with <laughs> anyway. But, you know, they, they want them to self-promote and bring that fan base. And it's, Absolutely. It's, a, it's a different mindset where if you're like, Go bring your fans from the YouTube over to our product. Absolutely. Why not? Versus we have to own everything and we have to control everything because nobody believes the stuff. No offense. I love the WWE and I, I've worked with them from a radio standpoint for years, but you know, no one's buying these social media f wars back and forth. I mean, come on. It's not happening. You know, when your handle is name WWE, it's controlled by the company. You know what I mean? These guys have their own little thing going on, which that, I think that has a lot to do with the success. I think, uh, you know, it all started with the Young Bucks. I agree. That's you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. Those, those kids, they, I mean, again, Cody had talked about it in interviews, talking about how they were told by everyone, you're never going to make it. And this I always tell people, never underestimate the power you give yourself by believing in you. We talked about what we talked about, Positively Unstoppable, my new book. Um, it's all about teaching yourself how to believe in yourself. And you got to train yourself just like you do anything else. And the Bucks, Matt and Nick, and uh, Dana, who's Matt's wife, um, those guys are really smart. They've been super, like, they're the first people that I know, well, in, definitely in our business, but that I even heard of that had a deal with Hot Topics. You know, they yeah. sell t-shirts? Yeah. And they sold out. They were sold out all the time. Right. Yeah. They made so much money off of the Hot Topics, you know, their, their t-shirts that they would do. Well, that and, Balor Club stuff was was hot too. That was very, you know, of course, NWO ish. Right, right. Uh, but that was, I mean, I remember seeing, you know, well, Caleb, you know, my my son, he's, he, you know, he's every, you know, doing that. I'm like, well, you know, that's, it goes back a little bit farther. He was like, right. I get it, I know, I'm, I'm a historian, but you know, dude, this is what's now. And I'm like, all right, dude, you do your thing, man. Right. You know, but it was very similar. And I look at, you know, and I believe that started in what New Japan, right? The Balor yeah, Club stuff. Pretty much. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of things that come, but again. All came off of the NWO. NWO, yeah. They were even the NWO Japan, you know, at one point because Bish had a Bischoff had a deal with them, and they would, you know, take talent back and forth and stuff. Um, but you know, back to I was talking about the Young Bucks. They're just very they're they're entrepreneurs. They're the first guys to have what are those dolls called the what are they, fungos? Yes, or, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah they you bring it over, Shija. Yeah. yeah. They they literally had the fungos fucking, you know, without a deal with Thank WWE, you, you know. And then, and and awesome. and, and awesome. AEW is not gonna um, stop them from doing that. Not at all. Wow, look at that. So she'd come over here and join us, and tell us what she. This look, I mean, nice looks enough. amazing, you know. I, I know this was probably done a lot. Uh, 
Uh, you, you you milked it over there. I'm guessing. I was, I was just hanging out listening. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> I've never I've never wow garlic so slow before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was Delicious, great. Man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Delicious. It was great. Go ahead, uh, run it down again. Uh, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So, uh, like I said, just quick sear, left side of the KJ, open flames. Hold on, quick sear. How long? Less than 30 seconds. Really? <laughs> yeah. Re- and yeah. then get, just to get that bottom half a nice little crispiness to it, move it over to the right side, put it in some foil, squeeze over that fresh lemon juice, cracked over some uh, rosemary, some salt, some fresh cracked pepper, hit a little bit of uh, American Prime, tented it so it steamed real quick. What does that mean? When you tent it? Yeah. So uh, tent- tenting is a great way to preserve the crust on something without it getting soggy and still letting it cook. Yeah, because this, so, uh, this, ta- this is, this is eat- I'm eating like a steak. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just like actually you get it from steaks, when you get your steak off the grill, you always want to let it rest, but a lot of people just leave it out in the open. I always tent mine, put a little aluminum tent over it so that heat keeps bouncing around in there so it keeps it hot, but it lets the juices sort of separate and spread around. So, so you make like a little tent yes, sir. of aluminum. Yes, sir. Top. Not yeah. wrap. Not right, top. just right on top. So that it doesn't suck and then it stays crispy. Exactly. Oh, awesome. And that nice little flavor. Just stuff you, you, you pick up cooking a lot. Cooking well, that's lot. what I want when people, you know, watch or listen to this. You know, look, I'm an amateur griller. The guy at the Kamada Joe at the house. Hey, so I, delicious, love, man. I, I love, you, love cooking you. on the KJ. That means a lot. But, means but when we door. do these podcasts <laughs> and she comes out, like, I'm just like you guys. I want to know the little tricks of this trade. Like, the tent thing? We're going to have to have a little section on the website, tenting. You know, because I, I, that, I, didn't, I never knew about that. That's yeah. great. It's a great way to allow something to keep cooking without ruining that, that bark. You can do it with, uh, with brisket, with uh, pulled pork. You can do it with a, almost any meat you can think of. But it's just one, th- one of those old tricks that you'd pay a lot of money for going to culinary school that you can just be like me. Just practice, t- practice, practice. Like, Did you oh, ever well, think when works. you were 12 years old you were going to make be making grouper for Diamond Dallas Page? No. <laughs> no, I would never. I, 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 I still don't. I, I know you're trying. I know you're hiding back oh, all of like your. You, know, you have no idea. Uh, no, I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, of course you do. I do. Yeah. Uh, no, I would never. I, I don't believe this. I'm going to watch this when this airs, and people are going to be like, "Oh, it's photoshopped." <laughs> <laughs> Really great, man. Thank you. Really I can, I'm going to take a photo and send it to my mom. Mom, I finally made it. <laughs> <laughs> so is this uh, 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 DDPY Performance Center approved? Could you serve this at the Performance Center? Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hell that's... yeah. This is just, when it comes to protein, and I like to get a lot of people, like I don't, I'm not a fish cook. Um, nope. I'm not a really good griller of fish, cause, so I just don't get it. But that is simple, super simple. And Thank you. And it tastes freaking delicious. So yeah, your, 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 your guests, your, your your clients, they can make that up real quick. It's a great, great quick meal. They don't have to put a lot of time or in, uh, energy into it. And it I mean, we're good. milking it on the on the podcast because Dallas and I are talking. But if you were to sit there, balls to the wall, I got to get this grouper done with all the fancy stuff that you put on top. What's the time on it? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Ten minutes. Let me you, you, you said something about. The two different sides of the grill. Yes, sir. So what does that mean? So, so you can set up, I like to set up my grill in a sear and cook station. Sear so, means so it's, it's just it's open flame. So one uh, high as you can go and the other one low? Well, 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 so let me, let me so open the grill so you can see it. Sort of. So ahead, the, the it's just, the Kamado Joe is just uh, one big circle, all the fires at the very bottom. But it comes with these great little deflector plates that help cancel out how hot one portion gets. So I just deflect one portion and use both plates to keep the right side cooler than the left because the left is just an open fire pit. Right. You look down, you can see the coals, the flames, everything. The right side, you'll see the plates that are just stopping the heat from going up. And that's and those cool. plates so, are in. Yeah, Dallas, yes, if you see that, the, the grill, it's, it's split into two, and it's got those ceramic deflector plates, which oh, she's talking okay. about. So those are the deflector plates there, and that stops the heat mm. from ba- from shooting up straight, just like it is over here. We're a live you action podcast. It's fantastic. There, oh, that's tell. that's yeah. scorching hot versus yeah. this side. Right. So it's like, one of those. It's like having an oven, you can control both. Uh, exactly, both exactly. Sides. And that's that's all yeah. smoking and grilling is is just playing with fire and learning how to control it. And when you're um, when you're actually cooking this, is, is it down or is it up? What, what so I had it down during the uh, the last portion of it, so that heat can radiate around this so is just like a jump exactly exactly also like when you're smoking 
uh, like brisket or whatever, those deflector plates will go in. You'll put the meat on there. Um, you know, that, that usually you use a lot of it for, at least for, again, the amateur guy, you know, you're using a lot of it for smoking stuff because it, it keeps the heat in there, the convection. Because yes, Kamada is just a type of grilling. I mean, they exactly. call it the Kamado gel, but it's actually a Japanese way of convection and grilling. Exactly. You know, so I know some people use the green egg, which is fine. We talk about the KJ because Atlanta Grill Company's one of the biggest, if not the biggest sellers in the world. I mean, they'll ship it to anybody, yeah. and they, they do because too. their prices are great, and they can get away with that. But, you know, you also got the, the Yoder pellet grill, which is really mainly for smoking. Yeah, right. that's not right. long-term. Yeah. You're, you're tossing on some ribs. or you're tossing Napoleon, which is the propane. Yeah, so, anyway. Um, all right, well, let's wrap it up. She, again, amazing job. Uh, Sheed's hey, recipes hey, on the website. Sheet, well, hey, hey, I'm not going to fight you for it. I'll let you know right now. I, uh, I, got, I made some extra for us in the back. But on, on our another piece our right website, uh, shoottogrillpodcast.com, all Sheed's recipes and, and uh, are up there, including the grouper they made today. Grouper supplied to us from Terry Smith at atlantasteakandseafood.com, creategraphics.net, uh, oxlawfirm.com. Jarrett and everybody, thank you so much. Northside Tool Rental, Bedlam Vodka. God, I love my guys at Bedlam. Uh, Bedlam Vodka. I know you do vodka, right? I mean, I'm a tequila guy, but I like bed- I do like vodka occasionally. You're gonna have to try this because this is amazing, and you can drink get this. Some by cups the way, and take, a, take a little commencement drink here. Uh, I got a little shots in there, by the way. DDPYoga.com, also DiamondDallasPage.com. The book is out. Uh, Go on Amazon. Positively unstoppable. And uh, also the Performance Center, because I knew earlier when we were talking about that, actually I meant to bring this up, is that we're talking about all the athletes and the wrestlers that go in there and Dallas helps out. But look, you can not only get it in your living room, but if you are in the Atlanta area, Smyrna exactly, you can go to the Performance Center and there's a good chance Dallas is going to be there. Right? Yeah, and then the, uh, the app that we you know, put out, got last, are, it's blowing up big time right now because it's got like 180 workouts on it. Got like over 100 uh, because it's got a nutrition section where we don't just tell you what to eat. We show, we grill, we, you know, we, you know, we cook, we bake. Well, you know, we got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, entrees, you know. So I, I give people, I don't, I don't care how healthy something is. If it doesn't taste great, I ain't eating it. Yeah. Period. So I've got that on there, Motivational Mondays. It keeps people focused on their goals. And then a the whole tracking section. But there's literally over 180 workouts on the site every week new content goes on for motivational mondays recipe or workout and different levels oh well, it starts in bed like you can't get out of bed i got three workouts for you in bed that'll help you get out of bed and then sit in a chair that's the r-rated section by no, the way that's no it's <laughs> not I'm just kidding. it's in bed working out to try to help yourself get out of bed so that you can sit in a chair and work out there and then get to a next part where you use a chair and then you don't have to use a chair and then you're off and running. Well, if any of you saw the Jake the Snake Roberts documentary, The Resurrection of Jake Snake Roberts, um, when Dallas showed up at his house, Jake couldn't move. Yeah, he was crippled. You know, he was, I mean, outside of, you know, the demons that, thank God, he was, he, he fought off. Yeah, you know, Jake, Jake, I mean, we're, as a fan, she, you and I grown up wrestling fans, especially a fan of Jake Snake Roberts. Who wasn't? Yeah. Right, yeah, Me you too. too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're looking at a guy that you you know loved in the ring, Good part liar. of one of the awesomest storylines ever. Who took a cobra to the Macho Man Randy Savage's arm, and then you see Jake Snake Roberts in this house, and he can't move. Dallas comes and really, I mean, saves his life. Him in. Yeah, moves, moves, him in. moves him into his house. And right now, and that, my wife steals his pajamas. And, <laughs> and that house, we called it the accountability crib. Since I moved over to uh, over to Atlanta which is just like three miles away, um, I now have at places at Airbnb. Yeah. Five star, uh-huh. the greatest reviews. If, I, you know, I don't even know how to tell people to go there. And I know it's like DDP's suite, yeah, the Razor Ramon suite, the Jake the Snake Roberts suite. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much booked through almost the whole summer because people have already booked everything up there. But that Airbnb thing's pretty cool. And I can get people who are coming down who are wanting to work out at the performance center, which is less than a mile away. Right, you know, yeah. So. And it's got all the memorabilia in the rooms and all that stuff. Yo, yeah, just like, there's over 800 pictures yeah. in the accountability crib now. And people love it. They love it. And my, my mother-in-law, she has a room there. She's in, like, the house mom. 80% of the reviews 
say something about Kang because she's like she's like Mrs. Claus. Yeah. Oh, she <laughs> stays here while she they stay there. there. She stays there. Oh, that's and everybody funny. loves her because she's so helpful. She she turns them, you know, tells them about the area, and you know, sometimes she'll even give them rides. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. That, yeah. That's that's at a extra service above and beyond. Yeah, it is, and she's she's. Awesome to have it. Plus, she's got a place to stay. You know? Well, again, thanks for everybody for watching uh, and listening, whatever you're doing. Thanks for supporting the podcast and all of our sponsors that are allowing us to grow and uh, our great guests like Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, thanks to the group Rashid. And until next time, Thank bye. See ya. Live rebelliously, drink responsibly with Bedlam Vodka. I tell you, they are the best at what they do. I am in love with Bedlam Vodka goes down smooth has consistency demand your bedlam vodka and we appreciate bedlam vodka for sponsoring the shoot to grill podcast bedlam vodka.com